a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries when it comes to the formation of extremely large galaxies, and specifically the mysteries of their formation, because even today it's not entirely clear how some of these galaxies formed. And that's because in the last couple of weeks there's actually been a couple of papers, with one potentially solving the mystery of elliptical galaxies, but one potentially discovering another mystery in regards to spiral galaxies, and specifically galaxies we refer to as grand design, the ones containing spiral arms. And so let's talk about some of these studies in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the basics. And the basics being types of galaxies out there. Generally speaking, when it comes to most galaxies discovered so far, they basically fall under one of three categories. Elliptical galaxies, spiral galaxies, or irregular galaxies. And though we do have some additional examples like peculiar galaxies or lenticular galaxies, for the most part, the majority of shapes out there falls under one of these three categories. And so, for example, we know that irregular galaxies usually form as a result of some kind of a disruption, most likely through collision of galaxies, or through a disruption of smaller galaxy by a larger galaxy. That's basically what happened to nearby galaxies Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud. But when it comes to spiral and elliptical galaxies, the story is a little bit more complicated. Mostly because of various discoveries from the James Webb and from some of the more advanced telescopes that became operational in the last decade. But it's really the elliptical galaxies that were always a little bit mysterious. What you're looking at right here is the example of the largest galaxy known to us, IC1101. And one of the questions in modern cosmology has always been about their formation. What exactly caused them to form and why do these galaxies get so large but also become so inactive over time? And that's because by definition a typical elliptical galaxy, which basically looks like a kind of a stretched circle or some kind of an oval, will usually contain no defining features inside of it, but will also contain very large clumps of really ancient stars that have existed for billions of years, but no gas, no dust, and not enough material to form new stars. And so as a result, these galaxies will usually appear kind of orange or even red, because most stars here are pretty old, much much older than the Sun. But when it came to their formation, it was always believed that they actually form by a merger of larger galaxies, such as for example the Milky Way and the Andromeda. As a matter of fact, for many years, there's always been an assumption that as the Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxies collide, they'll probably eventually form some kind of a very large elliptical galaxy, somewhat similar to IC1101. Or at least that's based on some of the preliminary simulations and a lot of modeling, and based on some of the previous assumptions. And so the initial scenario, or I guess the initial explanation was that you had a collision between two large galaxies that would then result in a much larger elliptical galaxy that would eventually settle down and assume a kind of a ovalish shape. But the problem here was that, for the most part, most of these galaxies had really old stars, over 10 billion years in age, which would require these galaxies to be formed from very early large galaxies, which technically should actually lead to enormous star formation as opposed to a quiescent galaxy that we usually observe. In other words, the formation of most of these elliptical galaxies was still very very difficult to explain and would not make a lot of sense for some of these older galaxies. Or at least if we assume that they formed as a result of a massive collision. And so the question of their shape and their ancient stars was somewhat difficult to answer. But luckily for us, we now have even more data from the famous ALMA. Atacama Large Millimeter Array that was able to discover something about the birth of these galaxies in the early universe. And so here in a study by Qin Hua Tang and her team, researchers used the observations from the ALMA telescope to uncover dust we've never seen before in a lot of ancient galaxies. And specifically by looking at over 100 distant galaxies, and focusing on the distribution of dust in these galaxies, mostly focusing on galaxies between 2.2 and 5.9 billion years old, which is basically during the so-called cosmic noon when most stars formed in the entire universe, researchers discovered a lot of dust in these galaxies, which in many cases was very compact, and was actually very different from what was expected from a typical disk-shaped galaxy. And because in this case this dust indicates the presence of gas, which is then responsible for the formation of stars, here this allowed the scientists to identify star-forming regions. But by modeling the shape of this dust and by trying to figure out 
how these stars were forming, they did uncover an unusual surprise. Here, all of these star-forming galaxies seem to be actually spherical and not disc-shaped. In other words, during this cosmic noon, a lot of galaxies that were forming massive amounts of stars, instead of being elliptical like previously believed, seem to contain enormous spherical regions of star formation that in terms of shape actually resembled a typical elliptical galaxy. In other words, they basically discovered dust that was shaped just like your typical elliptical galaxy we observe today. With the new question being what exactly was happening here and why was this gas shaped this way? And so here, through additional modeling and through cosmological computer simulations, the new explanation involved very, very large streams of cold gas, mostly from surrounding galaxies, that through the process of galactic interaction and galactic merger, drove all of this gas into star-forming cores, creating these very compact but basically spherical regions deep inside these star-forming galaxies. And so just to rephrase this, because the galaxies back then were much closer and interacted much more frequently, all of this interaction eventually produced these very large spherical regions that would suddenly form a lot of stars and eventually use up all of this gas, leaving nothing behind. And after billions of years, it kind of resembled this, a typical elliptical galaxy. And so basically here, we finally had some actual observational evidence for how elliptical galaxies most likely formed. But unfortunately, when it comes to the disk galaxies and specifically grand design disks with spiral arms, the story gets a little bit more complicated. And that's because despite observation of some of these disks in the early universe, it was always assumed that the grand design itself with a stable disk and a lot of spiral arms would not form for the first few billions of years. And that's because, as mentioned before, a lot of these galaxies were interacting quite a lot and a lot of these galaxies were very clumpy, very compact, and thus did not possess very stable shapes. And so a typical spiral galaxy with permanent formations like spiral arms, this is an example of Messier 77, would very likely take at least a few billion years to form. But as always, the observations from the James Webb Space Telescope seem to suggest that these assumptions were once again incorrect. And so the new mystery now is the formation of spiral galaxies. And all this is based on the study by Rashi Jain and Yogesh Wadadekar that used the data from James Webb to discover this grand design spiral galaxy only one and a half billion years after the Big Bang. And since most of the other spiral galaxies found so far always appear to be much younger and did not have such a stable formation, it makes this discovery, galaxy known as A2744-GDSP-Z4, a very strange exception. Here, despite the young age, we seem to have two well-defined spiral arms that have never really been seen at these distances. All of the previous discoveries of spiral arm galaxies were much closer to us and basically when the universe was already much older, at least 2 billion years old. But here with the redshift of 4.03, this is when the universe was just over 1.5 billion years old, with this galaxy already possessing a lot of shapes, usually associated with the grand design. Moreover, this is already a really massive galaxy, at least 10 billion solar masses in mass, which this galaxy seems to have accumulated in a very short period of time. But because a lot of these early galaxies were always super hot, very compact and produced a lot of stars, the spiral and the arms technically should not be possible. Yet the observations suggest otherwise. But here one of the potential explanations is one of the features visible in the picture, the central galactic bar. In the vast majority of spiral galaxies, this feature usually causes starburst along the spiral arms and also guides the gas between the inner and outer regions of the galaxy, affecting the motion of stars and gas, and thus growing the arms. But once again, it was always believed that this was a kind of a mature phase phenomenon, with only older galaxies being able to form these features. And so in that sense, the scientists from one study were able to solve the mystery of elliptical galaxies, but the researchers from the other study ended up creating a new mystery in regards to spiral galaxies. And so at least for now, this is going to remain a mystery until future observations. Which by itself, I guess, is kind of ironic because a few years ago, it was actually the elliptical galaxies that were more mysterious and the spiral galaxies were believed to be well understood, but the observations from the James Webb and the observations from Alma pretty much changed everything. It looks like now the elliptical galaxies are actually more or less explained and it's the spiral galaxies are creating a new mystery. And some of these mysteries you can learn about in some of the videos in the description. 
but we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once we find something else about spiral and elliptical galaxies, or once someone else finds a way to explain all of this through new observations. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.